Congratulations, guys. And uh, you're on the second season of this reality show. Talk about why you wanted to do a reality show and what do you think audiences will get from watching your show? I wanted to do a, a reality show because I thought it was a great opportunity uh, that could lead to, you know, potential business opportunities for our family. We're involved in, you know, many different types of businesses, including real estate and banking. I saw the success of other reality show families like the Kardashians. That inspired me. And I hope, you know, audience will take away that, you know, no matter how hard life gets, you know, never get up, give up and always embrace your family. Give hugs and kisses whenever you can. I think you and I did the reality show uh, more so, you know, when, when Washington had this crazy idea um, and we, we didn't think it was going to get picked up or happen. But, you know, now that we're here, you know, I think with season two, you'll see a lot of, you know, the importance of family and the cultural values that we present and how that's at, at the heart of our family. Yeah, I mean, I did this show purely because, you know, I love my brother and he wanted me to do this for him. And here we are today. And I'm glad that people can relate to us. And uh, one thing that is truly inspiring is seeing uh, your parents, how they were struggling immigrants and how they made it in the United States. Because, you know, we, we're Asians and we're always like trying to do our best when we are in the United States to make our dreams come true. So mm -hmm. what were some of the lessons you found out from your parents? Um, I think I've learned from my parents that, you know, whatever odds are against you, you know, my parents had extreme, they, they didn't speak the language and, you know, they came here with nothing in the middle of a war. And it's just inspiring to know that, you know, even if you came from nothing and you have nothing that's hated to you, like hard work, you know, ingenuity can pay off. Mm -hmm. I think I learned the same thing, you know, growing up, we saw our parents work hard and, and struggle every day so that we could achieve our own version of the American dream. They didn't know anybody. They didn't really speak the language, but they were, they built a successful company. And I feel like, you know, my sister, my wife and I were doing the same thing. We didn't know anybody in the reality show space or, or Hollywood, but we're just trying to make it happen and open up eyes to other Asians around the world that, you know, anything is possible, but you've got to be able to step outside the box and dream big and go for it. You know, what I learned from both my parents and his parents is, you know, not just the hard work, but how children is such a huge motivating factor. You know, our parents didn't come over here to work hard for themselves. They worked hard for us so we could have a better life. And for their grandbabies and, you know, future generations, you know, they set up a foundation knowing that they're going to suffer and may not, you know, achieve something in their lifetime, but hopefully set something up for our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Washington, what do you think of your father naming you boys after presidents? Don't, doesn't that give you uh, too much pressure or stress? Yes, it definitely <laughs> does. Um, you know, growing up all my life, you know, my dad, you know, would remind me that I was named after the greatest leader the world has ever known and that I have to step into those shoes because I'm the first generation Vietnamese from the Vietnam War and that anything I did was going to be magnified. But growing up, watching my father's success, not only did my parents have pressure on me, but the expectations of my community that either I would have to step into my father's shoes or be better which is part of the Asian culture that the man has to be better or equal to his father. It's definitely difficult. And the way I coped with that was not correct. And I've tried to correct it the past few years, especially on TV to inspire other males like myself that, you know, you can make changes and that your family, your wife is worth more than any fun you could have with your friends, I guess. <laughs> And uh, Judy, you're the rebel in the family. You're very outspoken and you always like put Washington in this place. So what what do you think, would you, would you raise your children the same way that you were raised with favoring the son above the daughter or how would you do that? Oh, you know, 
after growing up in Washington shadow and I know how it feels on this side, you know, I know Washington like loves it because he doesn't know anything different. Right. But for me growing up in his shadow and knowing that, you know, I had a different set of rules. I definitely don't want to raise my children that way. You know, I want them to know that I love all of them equally and that, you know, that all of them, um, I, that I love them equally and I will treat them equally and that, that, you know, just because one child is the favorite doesn't mean they can get away with everything, you know, because then that leaves me and Reagan feeling like, what about us, you know, and I don't want my children to feel that way. And Leslie, you're like the outsider being insider, like you see the whole family as they are, you know, with all the partying and the expense. What would you do? <laughs> How would you raise your children? I mean, I wanted to raise him to be humble. Um, you know, Roosevelt is very spoiled by his, you know, grandparents um, and his dad. You know, any, anything he wants, you know, he gets. Um, I want to raise him to be more humble, you know, work for a dollar, like what a dollar's worth. Um, save up for college, not save up for toys. Little things like that that I've been trying to just beat in him being in this family. And... Um... Reagan is the most different from uh, the three of you. Why, why do you think doesn't he want to participate in the reality show? I think because he's sister. the same one. <laughs> yeah. And you elaborate. <laughs> you know, Reagan really is a very uh, private person and, you know, he's always been that way. And for him to really, you know, to show his private life, that, that would be, ask too much of Reagan. Like Reagan, when he does appear, he really does as a favor for my mom because my mom like wants all three of us to be together on this show. But other than that, he'll do it for my mom here and there, but he would never ever show his private life. And you were saying something, Washington? I mean, yeah, growing up, you know, Reagan would get annoyed if we even asked him like, hey, who are you dating? Like if he was hanging out with some girl, and I asked, hey, is that your girlfriend? And of course we would fight because he's like, why do you need a nut? Like, that's not <laughs> I mean. And uh, Judy, how do you think Nate will be uh, blending in into the family being accepted by the whole family? Do you think he can adjust? Oh, you know, I think, you know, my family has really embraced Nate, you know, even though, you know, they weren't supportive of my divorce in the first season. You know, they've come to see how, you know, how Nate treats me and how much happier I am and, you know, how it should be between a husband and a wife and, and a marriage or a relationship. So I just feel like they, you know, I, I really think my parents like him more than they like me. You know, he's just so nice to them and he always makes sure they're happy. And, you know, here I am just always outspoken about things I don't like. <laughs> and uh, finally, what, what would you teach your children about money? I would teach my children about money that, you know, they need to work for it and save for a rainy day. I just feel like nowadays they watch TV and they watch these YouTube videos and everything looks so easy to have these nice homes and these nice toys. And I just want them to know that it doesn't come easy. And, uh, Washington or Leslie? I think, I mean, same with Judy, it's just, you know, money is not easy to make. Um, and when you do have it, you should save it for, you know, something serious that might happen later. And, um, you know, even though we live a good lifestyle now, there are things that happen in life that aren't always happy and that, are, that you know, life throws at you and you need, be, you need to be able to support yourself and you need to be able to be independent. Um, you know, I can only teach from my failures and, you know, I was definitely spoiled I also had a lot of wins in businesses and a lot of losses, but I never really cherished those dollars I made because I thought they would always come. And, you know, what I would teach my kids is to, you know, save, save the money that you can and reinvest and save partying for later. You know? mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us. Amazing. Thank you, Janet. <laughs>